And he's made his triumphant return to Minnesota. Rod Carew, it is so good to see you here at uh, the place I know, even though you don't live here, you still call this place home, don't you? Well, it will always be home. <laughs> you know, I started my career here. I lived here for the time that I was with the Twins. Didn't want to leave. And so uh, whenever I come back, it's like I never left. Everybody wants to know how you're feeling and how you're doing. It has been what seven months roughly since your heart and kidney surgery. Pujols pushes one through the open right side of the infield. But how are you feeling? Well, I feel good. Believe it or not, you know it's uh, it was a journey and it was a long journey for me to take and for my wife to be there with me and take it. Uh, and I wouldn't want anyone to go through it. Because if you, well, let's put it this way. I was never afraid to die. You know, I, I knew that one day it's going to happen. So I never were worried about it. I talked to, to God about it. But I was never afraid to die. And um, I think that helped me out a lot because uh, I've talked to other guys that have been through the same thing. And they were so concerned with uh, if they're going to wake up tomorrow and see another day. And, but I, I didn't have any of those thoughts, you know. You uh, were a great baseball player. I don't know that you weren't one of the more patient hitters because you didn't swing out of the strike zone. But your patience had to be extraordinarily tested through this procedure, the whole process. And even up until the very end, the, the patience needed and having to wait once you knew you were going to get the transplant and then having to actually wait for it to happen. Yeah, you know, it's uh, that was a, a tough wait because um, we we knew that I was up on the list. My ball to right, Kepler leaps, can't make the play, runs into the wall. Buxton retrieves it. There'll be runners at second and third, and Kepler appears to be okay as the Angels open up the fourth with a, a pair of hits. So I just. Uh, I figured whatever happens is going to happen. I knew that God didn't want me too soon, you know, because I <laughs> I died three times between the golf course and going to the hospital, and they kept bringing me back, and I was saying, "Okay, I'm not ready, and you're not ready to have me," you know. So um, after that, I felt a lot more comfortable with where I was, you know. I, I talked to him all the time and I, I, I thanked him all the time. The only thing that I was really concerned about was Rhonda. Who's going to take care of her? You know, she's going to be all by herself. And, you know, she didn't think I was going anywhere. She says, honey, you know, we, we're going to maintain our faith throughout this whole journey. And sure enough, we did. It's, it's an incredible. Journey, Rod. Uh, you were talking with me down in the dugout. And, you know, I can't imagine what what your family, what your wife went through, Rhonda. You said she was there every day. She's, and you, I chuckled when you said I had to tell her to leave. Yeah, I said, get out of here. Leave me alone. I want to sleep. You know. But she she said, okay, okay. And the thing is, I wanted her to leave by eight o'clock. Every night, because I didn't want her driving around LA and, you know, probably get in trouble or something. So um, she'd say, okay, okay. And she knew I was tired, so she'd wait for me to fall asleep and then not leave for another two hours, you know. So, but she was just un unbelievable. And then she would come in about 10 o'clock the next day, and while I'm asleep, the doctors are coming through. And, Telling, telling us what to do, I was just like gone. And she was taking all the information in. Now she wants to be a nurse. <laughs> she wants me to buy her one of those jackets. Probably know? be a good one. <laughs> oh. Two and one, the count to Simmons. Angels trying to put together a comeback here down four to nothing. And that ball hit the right field. It'll be down for a hit. And it'll score two runs. And just like that, it's four to two. The donor uh, that uh, you were blessed to have Conrad uh, Ryland Ruland. Ruland, uh, a former professional athlete former right. uh, uh, tight end with the New England Patriots and all that and I know that 
you can't go through something like what you've gone through without having a very special relationship with his family. Now we do because I I didn't I didn't know the family at all. I had met uh, Conrad at uh, he was in middle school with my son and my daughter and um, I went to watch basketball one day and there he was and so he met me and he ran around the school telling everybody oh I met Rod Carew today did you meet Rod Carew today and that was the last time I had seen him and then that's to get crazy. his heart yeah, you know crazy. yeah what a wonderful world I mean in, in, a, in a sad way you know somebody loses their life that helps you it's just phenomenal to me. Well, you know, Jack, that's that's what people have to understand. You know, uh, lift a foul into the seats. Donating uh, organs and stuff is so important to a lot of people that are, that are waiting. Sure. And it can help them go on with their lives and, and do things. But some people just don't care about uh, giving those people the opportunity. There are a lot of myths out there that doctors are going to let you die because, you know, you have somebody else that they're waiting to give you heart and kidney or whatever to it. I tell you, I'm living proof. It's not that way. One strike. High fly left center field Rosario. Buxton and it's Buxton in front of Rosario with the catch for one away. Well, you're here to. You know, make your triumphant return to Minnesota, but also to commemorate a wonderful season in 1977 when you threatened the 400 mark, finished at 388. And not to, by the way, not to diminish what George Brett did in 1980, he had 515 at bats. Not to diminish what Tony Gwynn did later on when he hit the, the 390, uh, but he had 406, 456 at bats. You hit 388 with 616 at bats. Well, those guys were. It was unfortunate that you know the season and uh, the strike and and they weren't able to, right, to do it because right. I they're two of my favorite guys. You know, we we used to talk. Tony and I were very close, and we used to talk about hitting a lot. And George and I were still very close. And um, I was pulling for both both of them uh, when they were they were going through it. Uh, People say, well, aren't you, you know, you didn't do it. You want them to do it. I says, yeah, you know, those are my buddies. That's what the game is all about. I was uh, I was so fortunate to play with the guy that had a chance. Uh, John Olerud uh, ended up hitting about 360, but going into the last month was still over 390. And the pressure that was on him was remarkable. And. You know, I, I can't even imagine what you might have been going through to chase that crazy, the legend of all legends, 400. Yeah. Ted Williams, the last guy to do it. Yeah, and I used to sometimes change my name at the hotel when we checked in. Yeah. I used to use my younger, my daughter's name, and um, I was lucky. I didn't get phone calls. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't drive Tony nuts. You know, with people calling all the time. So. Uh, now you would have had to post, you know, Facebook posts and all that kind of stuff yeah, now well, on how you feel at any given time and in you any know, given I, city. I, and I, I don't do it now. <laughs> you know, you know what's good is about my wife is that she was sending out all the, the information and how I was doing and, you know, when I was going to get out of the hospital and whatever. She did everything. You know, I just kind of hung around and wait, waited until they tell me I, I could leave. Uh, Ted Williams hit 406 in 1941. He had 456 at bats that year. Gwynn had 14 and 419 at bats in the strike short year. And you said many times you went to 18 All Star games. And yet you say the, the biggest thrill you had was just over 40 years ago at Met Stadium on that wonderful Sunday afternoon against the White Sox. Yeah, I tell you. We wore them out. <laughs> Glenn 19 Adams. runs. <laughs> Glenn Adams. You know, you know that players still talk about the day they clapped somebody. <laughs> you know, at, at the at the dinner we have at the Hall of Fame, 
you know, the pitchers sit on one table oh, and imagine. they talk about, you know, <laughs> who they used to get out and, oh, yeah, Karu used a bunch of Judy, but I was getting those bunch of Judy hits and laughing all the way. <laughs> you know? But, but we, you know, that's it, the greatest fraternity in the world. Jack, when you get in there, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Oh, oh boy. I'm serious. One and two to Maldonado. This one's leading here four to two. And a strikeout. They aired a piece here, and i would never heard you make this comment before. But somebody asked you what your favorite song was, and you said the Star Spangled Banner because every time you heard it, you knew you were going to get two hits. Two or three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told that to, to Big Poppy and uh, uh, the second baseman one day, and they were just roaring all over. I had a teammate the, in Detroit, Tom Brookins, and oh, yeah. one day we were teammates for five years, and one day he looks at me right after the national anthem he says every time I hear that song I have a bad day <laughs> and so you're the complete opposite of that. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, I, I used to have fun I, I played the game like you know I was just a kid having yep. fun Yep, and it showed and everybody everybody that knew you Rod and, and watched you play uh, you know I was a Young guy myself, but uh, I remember the young days when, you know, we're we're not that far in age anymore. At that point in my life, you were an old timer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but how you inspired a whole generation of youth, wow. and how we mimicked you, and uh, you know, it's it's just so unique. We see it today with the Twins heroes, but you know, uh, did you, you hear ever the, do that? Do you hear the way Jack's talking? Did yeah. you ever do that? Did you ever, as a kid, want to be like somebody else? No, you did. No, I just want to be myself. I just want to go out and play the game, you know, learn the game the right way and play the game the right way. But, you know, it's I remember one year I was 45 for 100. And Reggie Jackson was saying, come on, right, you can do it. You can get 50 hits. I, I, I needed five hits to get 50 and 100. Yeah. And he was pumping me up, and I says, Jack, I'm in trouble. I got a guy out there that I can't hit. <laughs> you know, Jack was on the mound. Oh, oh is that right? I, I, went, I, I went over four that day. So I ended up 49 for, for uh, 49 for what? For 100? 49 for 100. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, it, what a bad. I mean, what a bad couple months that must have been. Uh, <laughs> couple of months. That was one day. <laughs> Who was the right-hander you had that uh, used to throw the sliders all the time? Dan Petri. Oh man, he had a good one. Oh, he used to eat me up too. One and two to Espinosa. As Mejia is trying to get through the fourth inning here, three hits to start the inning and a couple of runs. He's trying to strand Simmons at first. Rod, have you watched much of the Twins this year? I know you've had a few other things on your mind, but have you had well, a chance lately to see him? Yeah. Hey, it is so wonderful for all of us to see you in Minnesota, and you're, you've brought, brightened up all our, our days. Congratulations on, on your successful journey back. Thanks, pal. And you know, like I say, it's always good to be back home. Yes. Rod Thank you. where he belongs in Minnesota.